Hey, howdy, Tama fam. This is Eric from the Tamagotchi Collectors Facebook group and Tamatown.com. I also go by Yeah Right Sure on Instagram and Discord. And I wanted to make a video on how I mod my virtual pets to operate at a faster speed. So typically whenever I get a duplicate virtual pet, I will mod that duplicate so that it runs at about 4.6 times the default speed. So as you would expect, what that allows you to do is go from egg to adult in about 4.6 times the time, or 4.6 times faster than you normally would be able to. So first thing you'll need is the device or devices that you want to mod. So for this video, I want to mod a Digimon 20th anniversary and a Tamagotchi mix. You'll need a screwdriver because we're going to have to open the devices. Um, and when we open the devices, we will need to replace a part that is inside the Tamagotchi or Virgil Pet. So to do that, you're going to need a soldering iron. This was about $30 on Amazon, not too expensive. You can get them for more expensive than that. I would just get one that has a iron, a rest for the iron, and a way to adjust the temperature. You'll also need a coil of solder. I don't know if that's the technical term for it, but a coil of solder, searching for that, comes up just fine. I bought this from Amazon as well. And lastly, the most important part will be a new resonator. So this is the part that we're going to be replacing inside of the virtual pet. I don't know if you can see that too well. These are used for timekeeping. These are also installed into normal wristwatches. The ones that are installed into Tamagotchis are actually the same ones installed to wristwatches. They vibrate at a frequency of 32 kilohertz. This one that we want to put into these devices operate or vibrates at 153.6 kilohertz per second. So that comes out to be about 4.6 times faster than 32 kilohertz, which is why when we finish with this mod and we check the clock, the clock is going to be ticking at 4.6 times the speed. So I will put a I will put some links in the description or in the comment section on Facebook with where you can buy these or where I at least bought them. If you're in other countries outside of America, you may have to do some research to figure out places that will ship to you. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with the Tamagotchi mix. I've already taken off the shell um, just with the screwdriver. And what you want to do first is locate the existing resonator, which on this model of the mix is located on the same side as the LCD and right below it. So let me get a good look at that. You can see there's the two solder points here, and it's kind of connected to the PCB with some glue, which is normal. What I'll usually do first is take the screwdriver and just push against it to break the glue. Like that. Yep. Okay, and then once the glue is broken, I'll go to my soldering iron here and turn up the temperature to about three. 312. All right, so this is a better view. You can see the two connection points. The mix is nice because I can flip up the screen here. Get that out of the way so that I'm ready to unsolder this. So the first thing I'll do is I'm gonna pinch on the, I'm gonna flip it up some. I'm gonna Pinch on it to, so I can have pressure, so that I'm I'm pulling I'm pulling backwards that way. And I'm gonna get my soldering iron, set it to 316 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm just going to place the soldering iron on a connection point while I'm pulling on the resonator. Uh, 
And there we go, disconnected. So it's got some glue there. And there we go, now it's off. So for the next step, you'll wanna get your replacement resonator here and line up the legs on the existing connection points. Then you can sort of just hold it down. Probably a safer method would be to use some tape, but I'm a little impatient and I'm okay. So now I'm gonna get my soldering iron back again. I'm gonna set it to 316 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm just, with it heated up, I'm just going to lightly tap on the existing solder until it melts. Here we go, that's one leg. And then I uh, try to get this leg. It's already on there, I just want to make sure it's good. All right, and that's it. It doesn't have to look perfect. Nobody cares, nobody's judging you or grading it. I suck at soldering. I only learned how to do it because of Tamagotchis and trying to figure out how to make them faster. So I'm definitely not an expert, but this will work and I'll prove that it works. So now that we've got it replaced, we are ready to go. We're gonna put it back together and I'm going to show you the clock. So now we've got the resonator installed to the mix. I'm going to put in batteries. We'll continue. Okay, you'll notice the animation is unchanged, which is what we want. The animation shouldn't be changed. But when we go to the clock, you see that's much faster. Now the other side effect to doing this, and you just saw, is that the screen timeout is also dependent on how many seconds pass. So because the device believes more seconds are passing than really are, the screen timeout, you'll notice, triggers quicker than normal. On the mix, I don't find that to be too annoying because I'm usually actively pushing buttons or going through the menus when I need to use it. The Meats did bug me some, mainly because the Meats has some button lag and overall lag in general. That one combined with the shorter screen timeout is just really annoying. Uh, on the mix, doesn't bother me too much. And again, this does work for vintages. I'll move on to the Digimon and show you how it looks on that. So this is what the Digimon looks like when it's disassembled. You can see it has the front. All I had to do was remove the back cover that has the battery cover. And I can actually ignore these screws here because the resonator is right there. So we're going to be doing the same thing we did for the mix. We're going to use the soldering iron to heat up those two connection points, those two solder points, and just pull it off and replace it with the new one we have here. So just like last time, I'm going to first take the screwdriver and just gently put it under the resonator just to move it left and right. Make sure that there's no adhesive holding it down. No way I can pinch it. I'm going to heat up the soldering iron to 316 degrees Fahrenheit. And sorry if the camera shakes, I have it on a stand right in front of me. So I'm bumping into it often. So now with pressure on pinching the resonator and pulling backwards this way to, the le to your left, I'm going to gently touch the soldering points. Trying to give a better angle. There we go. Now it's probably safer to use some kind of needle nose pliers to pull on that rather than your fingers, letting your fingers get so close to the iron. Um, but you're gonna have to deal with what I'm doing in this video because I'm 
just like that. All right, so what I'm doing now is I've got the new resonator and I'm lining up its legs with the existing connection points. Okay, so now I've got them. Again, soldering iron at 315 degrees Fahrenheit. And with the legs already lined up on the existing points, I'm just going to tap and hold for a little bit. one's done. All right, there we go. I'm gonna gently push on it and make sure that it's on there good. I was putting it back together and I realized that it actually won't turn on and I'm gonna leave that in the video because I think it's good to show what happens with some virtual pets that don't want to accept the 153.6 kilohertz resonators and what you can do after you learn that. So what you'll see is when it's turned off, I'll put the battery in and when I do, oops, this is what you're gonna see. Now you'll see that line go across the screen um, and it won't turn on. I can hit the reset button several times and it's not going to turn on. Now what that does happen uh, on connect some connections and some of the later models of the meats, they won't accept resonators as fast as 153 kilohertz. So what you have to do is instead for those, you'll use 100 kilohertz oscillators. Now that's going to be, it's going to result in a slower speed because 100 is only a little over three times 32 kilohertz, which is the default resonator in these devices. Um, so the, the device won't operate as fast, but it'll be at about 3.1x speed. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm gonna replace that off camera, and then we'll start it back up. Okay, I just finished taking out the 156, or 153.6 kilohertz resonator that we had just put in in the previous video. And instead I replaced it with a 100 kilohertz resonator. So I'm going to put the battery in and this should result in a Digimon that is, oh, we don't need to put that on, in a Digimon that is three, a little over three times faster than normal. We'll name, we don't need to name it. Uh, and as you can already see, that egg animation is faster than what you would normally expect. Looking at the seconds here, just get a better light on that. Think of the seconds you can see, they are much faster than what you would expect. So unlike the Tamagotchi mix, the animations for these vintages will be increased by three times. So we'll see the feeding animation. Food. That actually didn't look too different but the default animation here is definitely faster. And just to show the clock again. All right, so that covers it. So a good rule of thumb that I've come across is usually if the device takes a CR2032, then it's likely to have problems running the 153.6 kilohertz resonator. If it takes two LR44s or two AAA batteries, then it will usually be okay to accept the 153.6 kilohertz resonator and function at the 5x speed. So like vintage Tamagotchis, um, like the Tamagotchi Ocean, the Genjichi, and the Mothra, those are examples of ones that I've ran before. Um, the connections, like the V2, the Akai, even the Japanese ones, the Kitai, 
and the Uritama. Those I've only been able to mod with the 100 kilohertz resonator. The exception to that rule would be the later meets models after pastel. After pastel, they seem to only take the 100 kilohertz resonators and they won't accept the 153. That's the rule of thumb I go by and I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck. If you have questions and you're trying to mod it, um, feel free to hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, or Discord. Thanks.